Hello everybody, thank you for joining me again today. I am Lee from the craftyspark.co.uk and today we are going to be making a card to match this box. Now I did this box recently on a blog hop that I was taking part in and when I did the card, uh, sorry, when I did the box, I said I was so, oh pardon me, it's <laughs> a good start isn't it? Got any gumps? <laughs> oh crikey, let's start again. Right, I did say that I was also going to make a card to match the box. So today's video is to do the card that matches this box. And we are going to be using the It's My Party paper again. And the perfect match for this particular paper is the Party Wishes stamp set. So this is the stamp set that we're going to use. Right, now I finally got that out of the way. <laughs> I can start with what I'm doing. My brain's racing ahead and because it's racing ahead, I'm not thinking properly. Right, let me just move those out of the way. Okay, to start off with them, grab your Simply Scoreboard and a score at all come on where are you there you are and you want some melon mambo cardstock and this is standard a4 length so 11 and 5 eighths ish by six inches all right and we are going to score this at two two and a half three and five and three quarters all right, move your scoreboard out of the way and just go at all. And now I am going to bring in my stamping trimmer. Now, if you don't have a stamping trimmer, don't panic, it doesn't matter. You can use a knife and a ruler just as easy. The, the actual measurements and everything else are going to be exactly the same. All right, okay, my trimmer is a metric trimmer. So I'm going to have to do this in centimetres as well as inches. On my blog, there will be measurements for both centimetres and inches. So you'll have them both on there. But I'm going to kind of be doing a bit of a mishmash at the minute. When I've done it, it will make perfect sense. And I'm also going to put a cutting diagram on, my, on the blog post as well. So you can see how you actually have to cut this. The design of this card was actually done by Amanda Bates at the Craft Spa and she's got lots and lots of these particular style cards on her blog but as there is always a but my different my measurements are slightly different to Amanda's all right but if you want to have a look at some more nip on over to her blog the link for that as I say will be on the blog post and you'll be able to see some of hers as well all right right let's go then now what I'm doing is I'm lining up my card so the end with the score lines on it I'm lining it up at one inch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down this edge but I'm going to stop at that second score line and I'm going to cut down from an inch all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cutter at two and a half centimetres, which is about an inch, and I'm going to cut down to that second score line. Then I'm going to lift up my blade, put it back down again at the third score line, and I'm going to cut to 12 inches. To, uh, goodness to 12 centimeters <laughs> so if you are working in inches hang on let me just grab my ruler you want to cut from one inch to two and a half inches lift up and then cut again from three inches to four and three quarter inches all right so it will look like this all right, so I've got, let me get this in the camera so you can see. And that's, that's the centre score line there. You've then got one cut space 
and another cup. All right. Now I'm going to flip it over because I want to do exactly the same on this side. All right. So again, I'm lining it up at one inch, and again, I'm going to start at two and a half centimeters or one inch. I'm going to cut down to the there the second score line lift up my blade move it along to the third score line put the blade back in and cut down to 12 centimeters again all right so in inches again that will be starting at one inch cut to two and a half lift your blade put it down at three cut again to four and three quarters all right okay now you need to turn your card back over again because what we're going to do is we're now going to cut straight across here all right so we're going to line up our edge with one inch again and we are going to again start at two and a half because that's now one inch over and we're going to cut down to about 12 and a half centimetres. All right. And then we're going to do the same on this end. But this time, if you turn your card right the way around, 180 degrees, and line up this edge, so all our cuts are now at this end, line up that edge at, uh, where's it got to be lined up at? Hang on got to think got to think got to think that's it four and three quarters or 12 centimeters so line it up at four and three quarters and then just cut again from those two lines all right so this is what you've actually ended up with oops all right can you see that i think you can see that all right can't you you see so we've got a bit still attached in the middle so that's our swing bit but then we've cut either side of it yeah okay right move that out of the way now then i've already pre-cut my pieces because i was a bit worried this video might end up being really really long okay but hopefully will be all right uh, right bone folder fold your card in half ish because obviously it's not going to be a perfect six inches is it it's slightly short on the edge there all right then you want to fold that way so that's whoop, the top score line don't fold your middle panel in fact you could even flatten the score lines out a little bit in the middle panel if you really wanted to i'm going to do that you see we don't need those score lines there but it just made it a bit easier just to score straight the way across right so we folded on that first score line the second score line we're going to go back on ourselves like that give that a nice firm squish and then the final score line we're coming back again like that all right so if you look at it from the side you've got this is your main this is your base here and you've got it so that it's looking like that there you go that's better view isn't it all right can you see how that works yeah good right flatten that back out again because we need to work on it now i'm just gonna i've done those a bit too hard those side bits so i'm just flattening them a little bit now i have here whoops I was trying to get really organised and look, I've got everything in a box. <laughs> Makes change, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, she's organised. <laughs> now, <laughs> right, I've got 
a square well it's not actually a perfect square this measures five and three quarters by five and a half and I've cut out in the center so that I've actually got a three and a quarter uh, sorry a three quarter of an inch strip going all the way around the outside that I am going to line up nice and carefully and stick on there if I can find my snail there we go now because you want to try and get this lined up all nice and neatly what I would suggest is by all means measure it if you want to if you're not going to measure it though hold one side up don't stick it all down straight away because otherwise you could end up in a bit of a muddle so I'm going to line up my top piece whoopsie daisy do you know what I think I'll open that out that might lay a bit flatter then might not so I'm going to line up that top bit and with any luck just about there we go like I say if you want to measure it by all means measure it I'm quite happy just to eyeball it because I'm a bit of a lazy what's it like that now because I've stuck that on there obviously I need to refold my little lines that I did there to make sure they're nicely squishy there we go like that right now I've done that bit in this center bit here this is the bit that's got score lines going across it I'm actually going to so I'm trying to figure out how it's going to lay flattest and I think it will lay flattest that way that's it We're keeping it open right I have cut um, another piece from the it's my party pack all of this paper is from it's my party all right loads of it so it all nicely matches so this one is four inches by four and three quarters and that as you can see fits perfect in that square there Ta -da! <laughs> oh you've got no idea how happy I am that did actually work then tried one earlier just to do the square bit because I was doing some um, making some invitations for a friend of mine and um, as I was trying to cut them I thought oh I wonder if I could just cut a square to fit inside a square mm, it sort of worked and it sort of didn't but this one's worked perfectly so it's brilliant so I'm going to line that up on the one that I've cut like that marginally big but never mind it's fine it'll do it'll do right on top of that yes there's more we're going to have another one and this one is going to be melon mambo and this one is um three and a quarter by three and a half that's it yeah three and a quarter by three and a half I'm going to put that on as well. I'm going to line that one up. So this has actually got a bigger board around this piece than the other pieces have. And then in the middle, we're going to do some stamping. Now, I have a piece of card. This is Whisper White and this is the thinnish one and this measures um, three and a quarter by three all right and I'm actually going to stamp on this using my Misty which I got at Christmas Ta -da! say hello to Misty hello <laughs> hang on let me make sure I'm in the the camera properly otherwise you won't see what I'm actually doing anyway will you uh, if I put it about there you should see it right you can see I've already got the stamps out that I'm going to use so I've got the birthday cake the candles and the make a wish one all right and we're going to be using melon mambo um, crushed curry and today we're actually going to be using some stamping markers as well all right so I'll move those over there for a minute 
first thing I need to do with my little piece of cardstock is pop it in the corner and move those magnets over it just to hold it in place for me all right to make sure it doesn't move now first things first birthday cake birthday cake is going to go in the middle so because we are using our lovely misty we can line it up nice and carefully and I just hope my head doesn't suddenly flash into the camera and I'm actually going to do my birthday cake uh, where's my washi tape gone there it is because I'm going to do my cake in two different colours I'm going to have a yellow cake with a pink base so I'm just going to mask off the base of the stamp and this is where the beauty of a misty comes into play for you so I mark off the base of that stamp and it's going to have whoop, some crushed curried ink on there yep that'll do so I'll put some crushed curried ink on now I'm going to peel off my washi tape and just shut the misty all right and that let's just squish it down a bit is giving me my birthday cake pretty neat huh right let's just grab a baby wipe to wipe off the top so I just want to clean that rest of that yellow off of there like that um I need something to dry it with I thought I had some tissues down there but I haven't I'll use my duster there we go so if you've noticed I haven't actually moved the stamp at all leave your stamp where it is because then you know it's going to line up properly now I want to do the base in Melon Mambo so this time I'm going to use a post-it note because it's bigger but the same principle so I'm just going to mask off the top so that I only get ink on the base pop some ink on there that's it that'll do nicely peel the piece of paper off fold it over and push down Ta-da! Isn't that clever? I love this thing too. If you haven't got a Misty, I would highly recommend you get one. Or at least think about getting one. Because, well, it just makes stamping so much easier. And I know there's a lot of people that are too scared to actually stamp things because they're worried about messing it up. Well, if you have a Misty, you, you can't really mess it up. Because if you do it wrong... Your stamp stayed exactly where you put it, your paper's exactly where you put it, so you just do it again, and it's absolutely fine. Superb! Right, done that one. Now, the next one I want to do is I'm going to make a wish. Now, this one, as you can see, judging by the mess around the edge of it, I've actually trimmed the excess rubber of my stamp. That's so that I can make sure I've got it in exactly the place I want it to be. If you are going to cut your stamps, be very, very careful. If you mess them up, that's your problem. It's not my fault. You held the scissors, you did the cutting, your fault, all right? So if you are gonna cut your stamps, be incredibly careful. Right, so I'm gonna line that up where I want it to be. Um, where do I want it to be? About there, I think. See, I'm, I'm actually looking at the stamp. I'm not looking at the words because I did that earlier and ended up in the wrong place. Hence, I then trimmed my stamp. Right, I think that'll do it. So I'm going to cut, shut that again. Now, this time, um, hang on, I just want to get a cotton bud because what I'm going to do, I'm going to stamp it 
in Melamambo. Just use the wet wipe to make my cotton bud a bit wet. I'm just going to wipe the Melon Mambo ink off the lettering. Now I'm just turning the cotton bud very slightly as I'm doing it to make sure that I'm not just spreading ink out. Obviously, I want to take it off, I don't want to spread it out. There we go. Yeah, that'll do. And then with my Stamp and Write marker, this is a basic black Stamp and Write marker. I'm just going to put some ink on those words because I want the words in black, but I want the sort of sprinkly bits in pink. So. There we go. Just breathe on it. Puts a little bit of moisture back on your stamp. Push it down. Open it up. Look at that, isn't that good? Now I want my words just a little bit darker so I'm just going to put a bit more ink onto the words. And this is the beauty of the misty, you see. You can go over your stamping and it doesn't mess it up. So a bit more ink on my words, I close it again and it's going to be in exactly the same place. Look at that, how good's that? And it's actually made that lettering a lot darker than what it was to begin with when I was using the marker. <laughs> I do like it. Right, let's clean that one off. Move that out of the way and the last thing I'm going to do is some candles. I'm going to do those exactly the same way so I'm going to Pop the candles on the top. Oh, again, I've trimmed off the rubber so that I can see what I'm doing properly. Candles on the top. Close it up. Open it up again. Now, what colour should we do our candles? Um, well, let's stay with pink and yellow, shall we? That'll do. There we go. So, again with a marker pen because I'm doing two colours and well it's easy I suppose plus I want to show you how how well the stamp and write markers work with the misty because a lot of people when they use stamp and write markers I have heard people say oh the ink doesn't come out dark enough it's not strong enough it's much better if you use an ink pad and yes of course it's better if you use an ink pad that's what ink pads are for aren't they but if you're using a misty, you don't really go wrong because that doesn't matter. Can you see? My candles aren't dark enough. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I know what I'll do. I'll just colour them in again and do it all over again. A bit more ink on there. Like that. Super duper! And do you know what else I'm going to do? Just as a finishing touch, if I can find my pencil case. Where have I done with my pencil case? What's the betting? It's downstairs. Oh, wow. Uh, it is downstairs. Oh, I'll tell you what, we'll use the other one. I'm just going to use my nice, lovely new Wink of Stella glittery pen and just put a little bit of sparkle on those candles there you go do you know what I'm going to put a little bit of sparkle on the cake as well just attach I don't need to put loads on just gives it just that little finishing touch there beautiful 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 Right, so that is our stamping done for the minute. 
Now this one I'm actually going to put on with dimensionals because I want this to stand out a little bit. If you wonder what the banging and crashing was just then, I keep all my dimensionals in a tin because <laughs> I have rather a lot of them because I tend to go through rather a lot of them. So I tend to keep them all in a tin. just makes grabbing hold of them a lot quicker and a lot easier. Right, bring our card back. Take off the back of the dimensionals. Oh, I did that one. Oh, did you hear that noise then? That was the dog snoring. <laughs> She's laying behind me, snoring. <laughs> oh, Molly, I have to put you on camera one day so you can say hello to everybody. There we go. Oh, you know what else I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to put some of the enamel dots on. I've got them out, haven't I? Because these, I think, will really give it a nice finish. Um, where's my pointy tool? I can't find it. I'll use this one instead. This one's just as good. It's just a bit bigger, that's all. Don't they look nice? I really like these enamel dots. I think they look really special. Don't you think? I do like them. Oops, drop one. Come back. There he is. There. That looks good, doesn't it? Right. Turn over on the inside, this bit here, I have got another piece of Party Wishes. Now this piece measures five, yeah, five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Because this is going to be sort of like the inside base, I suppose you could call it. So with the balloons on, because I'm trying to match up on our box, obviously. So line that up nice and carefully. Nice and straight. There we go. Stick that down. And then, oh, look, it's coming together. See, that is going to go like that. And then it will sit like that. I hope you can see that. Hmm, kind of can, can't you? That's how it's going to sit. You'll probably find that the photos will look much better of it. But that's how it's going to be sitting. Now, on here, um, what have I got here? Right, here we go. These are our last bits. What I'm going to do is, first of all, I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock that's one and a half inches wide by, how long is it? It is four and three quarters of an inch long. All right. Now with my banner punch, I'm going to pop that in there and just punch off both ends like that. There we go. One banner punch. Now, the reason I've got these other two bits was because I couldn't quite make my mind up what I was going to do next. You see, this is going to be going on there. But does it go on there on a bit of pink? Which, is that too much pink? Mm, could be, couldn't it? Let's try it on this one. This one here, what I've done with this paper is it's one and three quarters of an inch by five inches. Now, when you actually look at your banner punch, you will notice there isn't a one and three quarter inch gap. So what you have to do is you just tuck it in, turn it over and just line it up from the other side because if you look at the bottom of your punch, you see where I'm moving that, whoops, I've moved it over too far then, yeah, so you can actually move it to where you need it to go, line it up and then punch it out and then just do exactly the same on the other end. 
So line it up from underneath rather than from the top. Like that. And punch it out. All right. Okay. Now then, I'm thinking it's probably going to be that one. What do you reckon? I think it is going to be that one, isn't it? Because we've got the... The black on there and the black. yeah i think we'll go with that one right yeah decided going with that one and i'm going to stamp it in melon mambo now i'm going to use actually let's put these stamps back before i lose them because i'm very good at losing stamps <laughs> as all my friends will tell you <laughs> see there's one missing already where's that one? Oh, that's still in the misty goodness I thought I'd lost one already let's clean that up shall we that little diddy put that back before I lose it right I'm gonna I think actually I'm gonna use the misty again to make sure I get this in the right place because I'm gonna use the happy birthday let's move that out of the way and that one out of the way right put my banner on there move the magnets on to hold it in place and then where else that going? It goes up that way. Uh, hang on, I've just got to line it up a minute. Mm, that there, I think. So I just close it, open it, find the ink pad. There's the ink pad. Ink up my stamp with my incredibly juicy ink pad. Dear, I had a bit of a made a bit of a mess of re-inking my ink pad. <laughs> Put a little bit too much ink on there. In fact, it's a little tip for you: if you put too much ink on your ink pad when you're re-inking. Just use your bone folder, a plastic one though, not the actual bone folder from Stampin' Up because it stains, but a plastic bone folder and just sort of scrape the ink up. Can you see where it's sort of a bit paler at the bottom and darker at the top? Or I had to move it a bit because I just put far too much on there. Right, fold over, stamp on, open up, ta-da! Oh, it's so simple, isn't it? Right, so there's the happy birthday. Oops, where's the banner gone? There's the banner. I think I'll just stick that straight on there like that. Um, where did I put? Oh, there it is. I was looking for the snail. Sorry. So that can go on there. I see how nicely it lines up. Clever, isn't it? And then I'm going to put a couple more dimensionals on the back so that it stands up because it will help to keep the, the card upright then. Which, once it's um, gone through the post, it might flatten out a little bit. So I'm going to put these on dimensionals. And I definitely think that black looks better now I've done it than the pink. Right, so where you actually put it on here is entirely up to you. I'm going to go about there, I think. Is that centred? No, it's miles out. <laughs> Shall I try centering it a bit? Shall I? That could be a good one, couldn't it? Um... <laughs> But there, I'll try that. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that looks better. Right. So that can go on there. And then I have another piece. Now, this piece of Whisper White is actually going to go on the back of the card. But before I do it, I'm just going to stamp on here as well. Oh, I've got ink on the inside of my... I was going to clean my stamp flap. Actually, that's not going to work now, is it? Because oh, let's take the misty out of the way. I've made the inside of it too wet and I need it to dry and I haven't got a tissue and I can't 
don't know where the tissues are so I'm just going to do it this way instead the old-fashioned way put the stamp on a block there's my card where's the ink pad there's the ink pad excellent all right so oh my god that was ink I didn't think that was ink never mind let's go on the other side Let's pop happy birthday on there and then um, move that one. I'll move that as well before I get that oh my word what is that inky fluff bit of inky fluff right um what else should we do what about some balloons actually let's put some balloons on Put some balloons around the edge couldn't we so if we use the crush carry again i'm just going to put a couple on there we go and do you know what i'm going to use some mint macaron as well and just do some with the mint macaron where is it there it is Goodness me, just clean that stamp off. So, just a couple of mint macaron ones as well. There we are. That looks nice, doesn't it? Excellent. Now, let's stick this onto the back of the card, and then this, if you're making one of these yourself, is going to be where you will write. So if we fold that down, flip it over, and then that will just sit nicely on the back there. Alright, so there's your happy birthday card to match. which I don't think you're going to be able to see properly, are you, from that angle? Oh, maybe you can. That's not too bad, is it? I turn it up so the light's on it a bit more. Whoop. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Try it like that. There you go. There. All right. So you now have a nice fancy fold card with a fancy box to make somebody's birthday really really special now like i said all the measurements for this is going to be on my blog all the links that you're going to need will also be on my blog so that you'll have it all there also 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 on the blog are there will be a list of all the products that i've used today all the different products that i've used will all be in a nice easy list for you so you can just click on it and add it straight to your shopping basket and then you can just buy whatever you need to make one of these gorgeous cards all right and don't forget celebration is on at the moment so for every 45 pounds you spend you will actually earn a free gift a free product which is really quite nifty because if you get um the paper and the stamp set and I think the card actually just that yeah that will actually earn you a free item from the celebration so I'll put the information for that down in the blog post as well so if you just look underneath the video you'll see the link for the blog post that goes with this and everything you need will be there so there'll be all the products for you to buy i'll even put the pdf on there of the celebration brochure so you can choose your free gift and then you can just add the whole lot to your shopping basket check out wait a few days and then you'll be able to make it just like that how exciting right that's it from me today i will stop stop going on because i know i do tend to go on sometimes <laughs> So I will stop going on and I will leave you in peace and I hope you join me again next time for another video from the Crafty Spark. See you soon. Bye.